The formation of the German simple past is very similar to the way it's done in English, where we take the stem of the verb and add the ending ed, as in, I cooked, we walked. In German, you simply squeeze a t between the stem and the normal present tense verb ending, and you get, Ich kochte, du kochtest, er kochte, sie kochte. Es kochte, wir kochten, ihr kochtet, sie kochten und sie kochten formal. But as you can see, there's one difference from the present tense endings, and that is the third person singular, where German uses the same e ending as in the first person. Ich kochte, er kochte. Ich spazierte, sie spazierte. Ich machte, es machte. And in the second person singular and plural, an e is added to avoid a consonant cluster, as is usual in German. Remember the present tense of arbeiten? Du arbeitest, ihr arbeitet. In the simple past tense, we even get two e's added in the du and ihr forms of arbeiten to avoid consonant clusters. One to separate the t at the end of the stem from the simple past t ending. The second to avoid the clusters tst and tt. Du arbeitetest, ihr arbeitetet. Just say it a few times, and you'll never have to think about it again. Some other verbs whose stem ends in t, d, and n insert an e to make the simple past t audible. Ich wartete from warten. Wir redeten from reden. Es regnete from regnen. Er öffnete from öffnen. The simple past of the verb haben, by the way, is formed like a regular verb too, except that we assimilate the b in the stem to a t and thus get ich hatte, du hattest, etc. As you would expect, separable verbs are separated as in the present tense, with no change in the sentence structure, their prefix being at the end of the sentence. Ich kaufte für die Party ein und brachte für alle etwas mit. Unfortunately, German shares another tray with English, in that there are also a fair number of strong verbs which form the simple past differently by changing their stem. I see becomes I saw, corresponding to the German Ich sah, and the English I was corresponds to the German Ich war. Of course, not all of the forms are as similar as these examples. But we have a fair few that at least resemble each other, which of course helps to memorize them. I ate, from to eat, is parallel to Ich aß, from essen. I spoke, from to speak, is parallel to Ich sprach, from sprechen. I sat, from to sit, is parallel to Ich saß. From sitzen. There's one thing all these irregular or strong verbs have in common. They don't have the e ending in the first and third person singular. They just use the bare stem. All other endings are the same present tense endings used by the regular simple past verbs. So that we get, for example, Ich sah, du sahst, er sah, sie sah. Es sah. Wir sahen. Ihr saht. Sie sahen. Sie sahen. I'm sure you'll find an extensive list of these strong, simple past verbs in your German textbook, in the same place you looked up the irregular perfect tense participles. Remember to write them, speak them, use them in order to learn them. Last but not least, there are a few verbs that want to have it both ways. Weak, irregular verbs that change the stem 
but otherwise are formed regularly with the squeezed in T and the E ending in the first and third person singular. So we get the forms Ich brachte from bringen to bring. Ich dachte from denken to think. Ich kannte from kennen to be acquainted with. Ich wusste from wissen to know. Ich nannte from nennen to name. The modal verbs follow a similar pattern, with most of them combining a stem change with the T plus the E ending in the first and second singular. Ich konnte from können. Ich durfte from dürfen. Ich musste from müssen. Ich mochte from mögen. Ich sollte from sollen. No stem change. Ich wollte from wollen. Again, no stem change. Hey, but you said that the simple past is simple. Well, it's all relative, isn't it? And there's a very good trick to make it at least simpler. All you have to do is memorize the first person singular of a verb and the rest of the forms will fall into place. So if you have ich spielte, you'll immediately recognize that it's regularly formed verb with the simple past T squeezed between stem and ending. If you have ich fuhr, you'll know that this is a strong verb with the corresponding no ending third person forms. Er, sie, es, fuhr, etc. This way you won't have to think about the rules too much after a very short period of time and the forms will simply flow. Quite simple after all, isn't it? Remember when we spoke about conjunctions and we mentioned one that is only used for past events and mostly with the simple past? Yes, als is the German conjunction for the English when used to refer to one-time events that happened in the past. Als ich in Deutschland war, ging ich oft ins Theater. When I was in Germany, I often went to the theater. Das Wetter war sehr kühl, als ich meine Schweizer Reise machte. The weather was very cool when I went on my trip to Switzerland. We'll use more als sentences in the practice section later. Talking of using the simple past, we have to mention one last thing which is repetition, really, if you still have the perfect tense rules in your head, and otherwise they're just a few mouse clicks away. When do we actually use the simple past? Yes, it's the so-called narrative past, meaning that we basically use it only in written German, in contrast to the perfect tense mainly used in spoken German, which is therefore also called the conversational past. For our film scene, we therefore had to think very hard to come up with a situation where we could use the simple past in a conversation. And mind you, Jutta could also have used the perfect tense to recount her Swiss adventures, but because she's telling a story relatively far back in the past, she could just as well go for the simple past, even though it's spoken German, as she indeed now does in the scene. It's always good to remember that languages are flexible and made up by people, not teachers. So as our last grammatical message of this course, take this on board. We've tried very hard to extract easy-to-follow rules from the use of everyday living language. But as far as the chicken-egg situation is concerned, this is one example where we definitely know that the living language egg was first and the grammar chicken was artificially incubated, put in a humidity crib and raised by foster parents called linguists. Remember that when you go to Germany and you hear things that in your textbook would be considered incorrect. Languages are living things, forever oscillating and changing. Otherwise, English and German would still be the same and we'd be out of a job. So listen, speak and marvel. Have fun and enjoy your German journey, wherever it may take you. We wish you a safe trip. <laughs>